anybody can build a gaming PC that can stream at max settings and high res with a budget of $2,000. Maybe some can even do it for $1,800, $600. But can it be done for about $200? We're gonna find out. The last time I showed you guys that it was totally possible to build a used gaming PC that can play modern current gen fighting game titles for about 200 bucks. That's a bargain, I'll take one. Now, even though it worked, I wasn't quite happy with the performance. Yes, there were some hardware upgrades that we could have made, but I felt like we could just do better overall. And I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging this time by adding a new element to the mix, which is streaming. Because everybody wants to be the next ninja or Pokemane or whoever, but most people think that you need some serious hardware in order to even get started. So today, we're gonna see if it's possible to do it on a poverty budget. So I went onto eBay and I did another search for used office workstations that were certainly destined for the landfill. And I found one that was faster and cheaper than the last one. So this one has i5-4770, I think, I'm pretty sure. And this one came with 16 gigs of RAM, but no hard drive. But it doesn't matter because hard drives are so cheap right now. So I ordered it and it came a few days later and I was pleasantly surprised. It was pretty easy to open up and I didn't even need to swap the PSU. I just used the one that it came with. It has the 16 gigs of RAM, so that helps a lot. I took an existing SSD that I had lying around. I popped that in there. So once it was up and running, I thought, okay, let's, let's see how it goes. Let's see what this thing can do. So the first thing that I did was go to userbenchmark.com download their benchmarking software. So even though it doesn't look like it performs very well, you know, these are just the benchmarks against other people who are also benchmarking their systems, right? So this is really just so that we have frame of reference for next time. I fired up Street Fighter V and then actually wanted to try running it at 1440 first. So it runs at 1440 and full screen at uh, max resolution, no problem. Uh, then I tried to do local recording through OBS, but that's you know kind of where it got a little choppy. So then I thought, okay, well, let me just drop the resolution down 1080 and then found that I was able to record at 1080 at 60 frames with OBS without a problem. So the next thing I did was plug in a webcam and this is where I thought things were gonna get kind of challenging for it. But really, once I had it plugged in, everything was fine. But then I thought, is this really the way that a streamer would do it? No, streamer would have an overlay. So then I tried that. And this is definitely where it started to have problems. I loaded up the overlay and then things came grinding to a halt. It was, you know, unplayable, unwatchable. It was terrible. So then I realized that it's because the overlay was a MOV file and it was, you know, using up a lot of system resources. So instead, I just set it to, you know, paused on a, on a single frame and then it was able to record and play at the same time at 60 frames per second for both the video and the game. Success! So then I decided to take it online for reals. And then as you can see, it's streaming to restream.io without a problem, which is definitely something that a real streamer would do. And yeah, it hasn't dropped any frames. The game's still running at 60, but can't stream and record at the same time and play the game at the same time. But really it doesn't matter if you can't stream and record at the same time because you could stream and then just download the archive afterwards, or you could just record and not worry about streaming at all because who even streams anymore anyways? So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. For less than what we paid last time, we're getting more bang for the buck because it can play Street Fighter at 60 frames and stream or record at 60 frames without a problem. So let me know what you guys think. Are you gonna be scouring eBay to try to find 
a used workstation that you can resuscitate and revive and turn it into a fighting game machine that can also make content. I think that's a pretty good deal. I would love to see somebody do better to be quite honest. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think because now we have two of these, right? We have the last one, which I'm still gonna have to make a little bit better. And we have this one, which works totally fine the way it is. So what do we do with these? Should we give them away? Should we sell them? Last time people were saying, hey, you know, we should do a tournament and then the winner gets it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you later.